Visiting a national forest is a really special experience, especially for young kids who are new to it. It can be exciting to leave your home behind and head out into an area that's covered with giant trees and filled with the sounds of nearby animals. A lot of us have fun memories of visiting national forests, running up trails and splashing around in creeks. There's a lot to do out there. It's all fun and games until someone disappears. My name is Brianne, and I'm the host and creator of Among the Dirt and Trees, a show where we explore true crime cases that occur out in nature. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the 1983 disappearance of Nyleen Marshall, a four-year-old girl who was playing with family and friends in a creek one minute, then gone the next. On the day that she disappeared, Nyleen Marshall was enjoying her time exploring Helena National Forest. Her family was a tight-knit group, and they decided to head out for a little camping trip. At some point, Nyleen and some other children in the area were all playing in a creek. It wasn't particularly deep, and they were all having fun catching frogs. But at some point, something changed. When the children turned to look for Nyleen, she was gone. Wearing only summer clothes and no shoes, no one believed that she could go far, but they were quickly proven wrong. Nyleen's family, police, and volunteers all set to work trying to find the missing girl, but they were out of luck. They walked the forest, they inspected lakes and ponds, they even went into caves fearful that she might have been dragged off into one of them by a wild animal. Nyleen and any traces of her seemed to vanish completely. But then, the children started talking. After some urging, the children that Nyleen was playing with mentioned a strange man. Now, I'm not a parent, but I cannot imagine what it must have been like for Nyleen's parents to learn from police that there was a strange man hanging out with all these kids. Stories like this always kind of rattle me because it speaks to the scary movie fan in my heart. Little kids talking about creepy strangers that adults cannot see is freaky, and a big part of that is because they aren't always real. And that makes it even worse. From what I saw, there weren't any real adult recounts of this strange man that was supposedly lingering near the children. And then the kids had even more to say. They reported that the strange man was very nice and that he had been playing with Nyleen. They claimed that he was teaching her a game called Follow the Shadow. And again, tell me that doesn't sound like something straight out of a horror film. While I was reading this, I just kind of kept thinking, oh god, creepy forest ghosts. A Google search did not reveal any distinct 1980s versions of this game, which somehow makes it even worse, but I have to assume that it meant that Nyleen was chasing a shadow in the same way that a cat chases a light. At four years old, I imagine this would be a delightful game to play. And it seems like it would be a highly effective way to lure a young girl away from a bunch of other kids. One minute, Nyleen was seen playing with the man, and the next minute she was gone. Though police didn't immediately dismiss the potential that Nyleen simply wandered off, This revelation certainly made it seem like Nyleen was a victim of an abduction. So, police immediately started following that theory. For all their efforts, they received nothing. No further evidence came up, and there was no sign of Nyleen. At least not for a while. 
nearly two years after Nileen disappeared, someone began to contact police and missing persons groups about Nileen. And most disturbingly, the person claimed to have her. Now, we have talked before about how people tend to be all around terrible and like to make fake calls to police and to the families of victims. When a kid goes missing, a lot of twisted people like to play a lot of games, but police actually believe that this individual might be telling the truth. In a series of communications, the individual claimed to have Nileen, and what this person had to share was deeply unsettling. He stated that he found Nileen out in the forest. He said that she was alone and scared and that she needed to be rescued. On the surface, outside of this context, that is all well and good, right? If you've ever found a kid that was alone and scared, I'm sure you called the police or worked with the owner of a store or something to make sure that the child ended up fine. It does happen. But this person didn't do that. This person claimed that Nileen needed to be rescued and that she would never be returned to her family. The excerpts from her alleged kidnapper's letters can be found online, and they definitely have this freaky, overly polite madman kind of vibe that just makes it all so much worse. But this person claimed that he loved Nileen too much to let her go and that she was being well taken care of. He told police that he worked from home, so he was able to spend plenty of time with her and that she was learning so much from him. He even claimed that he was taking Nileen all around the world and detailed out how excited she was about their adventures. He even included a kind of mocking statement about how nobody ever questioned passports so he could literally just take her out of the country freely. These communications were sent to police through missing persons networks, and they would come with little updates. And even worse, they were initially directed at the family. The letters, like, expressed hope that knowing Nileen was safe would bring the family comfort, as if that was all that they were worried about. It sounds pretty unnerving, right? The man's belief that he could just take Nileen and keep her to raise as his own is creepy. Some people might even say that it sounds a little bit made up. Unfortunately, police did confirm that the man shared key details that had not been released to the public. Details that they believe confirmed that he was actually telling the truth about abducting Nileen. In one of the letters received by police, he talks about how big Nileen has gotten and how she's growing. The details about her development read like a giddy parent's Facebook post, which just, again, makes this so unnerving to look at. He informed police that Nileen was now going by the name Kay and that she was happier than ever. He talked about the games they would play and how much she loved to travel. And then, with the same jovial tone, he explained how he molested her. Police were on high alert and managed to track down the phone booths where the calls were coming from, but they couldn't trace the letters to any specific spot. All they really knew was that the person was somewhere in Wisconsin. Then at some point, another person claimed to have abducted her and killed her. They told police where they dropped her body, but police didn't find anything when they went searching. 
And for a pretty long time, that was the last that police really heard of the case. Now, police have been known to get fairly creative when it comes to looking for leads. It's kind of a part of the job. One method in particular might surprise you, or you might assume that it's something that only happens on TV shows. Sometimes, when a case goes cold, police will work with psychics. Back in high school, I took AP Psych and loved every minute of it. But what I really loved was my final project for the class. My teacher had us all choose a specific niche within the psych world to focus on, and for mine, I chose parapsychology. For those of you who don't know, parapsychology is the study of psychic phenomena and paranormal activity as it relates to the human mind. Basically, it covers things like telepathy, out-of-body experiences, and of course, psychics. And you would not believe how many police departments actually work with psychics when it comes to missing persons cases. If you don't believe me, I will happily direct you to a journal article published in Law Enforcement Technology from 2004 that is discussed on the official U.S. Department of Justice website. Basically, the article is a breakdown of whether or not psychics can help or hinder a case. In this case, a psychic was called in. Plenty of psychics claim to have helped police locate missing persons, and I've seen a lot of affirmations of their help, which is just wild. I still don't know where I fall on the whole psychic solving crime situation, but I do like to think that there's something to it, because it's pretty cool, if nothing else. In this case, the psychic was not able to locate Dylene, But I did find a good many instances of other kids that have been found after police consulted a local psychic. Something about their decision to include a psychic in this case actually kind of struck me. They had no real evidence and no real suspects, so they kind of went for that last chance at hope. Unfortunately, she was still just gone. Throughout the years, plenty of people have claimed to see an Eileen, and one of the leads came in 15 years after her abduction. The staff at a local hospital claimed that a young woman named Helena, you know, like Helena National Forest, came in with a much older man. The girl was 19 and pregnant and believed that her mom's name was Nyleen. As the hospital staff began to ask more questions, the woman and this man fled the hospital. Nothing ever came of this lead, but it's certainly interesting. The details surrounding the story definitely match. I did actually see one claim that they tested her blood and found out that it wasn't Nyleen, but I can't be too sure on that one. While Nyleen was missing, two extreme things happened. One of them was very good, and the other was very bad. Twelve years after Nyleen's disappearance, her mother, Nancy, also disappeared. But Nancy wasn't hidden for long. She was found murdered in a hotel room in Mexico. And while police don't think it was related to Nyleen's disappearance, it's just one more heartbreaking tragedy to hit this family. Now let's talk about the good thing. At some point, a young man became convinced that one of his classmates from school was actually Nyleen, and he called it in. When police looked into it, they were saddened to learn that the girl was not Nyleen. But then they learned something new. 
The girl in question was actually Monica Bonilla, a girl who had disappeared the year before Nylene at the age of five. Monica vanished when her father, who had begun to suffer delusions about being the reincarnation of John Lennon, emptied out the house and ran off with her, leaving her mother in pieces. After missing for eight full years, she was actually able to be reunited with her family. If her classmate hadn't been learning about Nylene's case, it seems very likely that Monica never would have been found. To this day, Nylene is still missing, but her family and internet sleuths alike like to believe that she really is alive out there and that she's somewhere safe. Maybe someday we'll get to hear that she was actually found. So, here's to hoping. If you want to talk mysterious disappearances or the joys of chasing crawdads, frogs, or other beasts in creeks, you can find me on Twitter or Instagram using the tag at datpod. For ad-free listening, remember to check out my page using patreon.com slash like and inscribe, okay? Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.